Now next we will discuss about hydrated cyst of liver. Now the causative organism of hydrated cyst of liver it is Echinococcus granulosus which is also called as dog tapeworm. So next we will discuss about hydrated cyst of liver. The causative organism it is caused by Echinococcus granulosus which is also called as dog tape worm. Now let us discuss the life cycle of Echinococcus granulosus. So what happens? The infected offal of sheep it is eaten by dog and remember this dog it acts as a definitive host it is the definitive host after that what happens this echinococcus granulosus it develops in dog's intestine it develops in dog's intestine into parasite and releases over. And each worm it can shed approximately 500 ova in bowel. After that what happens these ova they are expelled in ova are expelled from dog's intestine to grass and vegetables after that these eggs they are ingested by sheep cattle or human beings and these human beings they act as intermediate host And what happens with through portal vein, through portal vein, they gain entry into liver and develop into larva and then form hydrated cyst. Now this was the life cycle of Echinococcus granulosus. Sometimes questions are asked from this life cycle. So I discussed it with you. Now another important point is that the most common involved lobe it is right lobe of the liver. So the most common lobe involved in hydrated disease it is right lobe of, lobe of the liver. And sometimes question is asked which is the most common segment which is involved it is segment 7 of the liver so it is segment 7 now let us discuss the anatomy of hydrated cyst so we will discuss the anatomy now let us understand it with the help of a diagram now it consists of three layers the cyst it consists of three layers This is the middle layer and this is the outermost layer. Now the outermost layer it is called as pseudocyst. Then after pseudocyst the middle layer it is ectocyst. And the innermost layer it is called as endocyst. Then there are various brood capsules. Then we have daughter cysts which contain the brood capsules. Now so if we discuss the anatomy we have got three layers. The outermost. It is called as pseudocyst. 
The outermost is called as pseudocyst or it is also called as adventitia layer or adventitia. Now, what is this layer? It is a inseparable fibrous tissue due to reaction of liver to the parasite. So this is formed due to reaction of liver to the parasite and it is the inseparable fibrous tissue. Now after that we have second layer, the middle layer. We have the middle layer which is called as ectocyst. And remember this ectocyst, it is a laminated membrane. It is a laminated membrane and it is formed by parasite itself parasite itself so it is formed by parasite itself now it is it is a whitish elastic and contains hydrated fluid hydrated fluid and can easily be peeled off from adventitia So this layer it can be easily peeled off from the adventitia layer. Now after that we have the endocyst, the third layer that is the innermost layer, it is the endocyst. Now remember this endocyst it is also called as germinal epithelium. So also called as germinal epithelium. Now it is the only living part it is the only living part lining the cyst. So sometimes question is asked in the exam which is the living part which lines the cyst. It is the endocyst. So after that this layer it secretes hydrated fluid and contains brood capsules with scolysis. So what happens when these brood capsules they disintegrate they develop into the new daughter cyst. Clear? So next let us discuss the clinical features. So what are the clinical features? The patient will present with asymptomatic palpable liver with a classical hydrated thrill so the patient will present with mostly these patients they are asymptomatic but the liver in such patients it is palpable so the patient will present with a palpable asymptomatic liver with a characteristic hydrated thrill after that now since the, there is a hydrated cyst in the liver so it will compress the biliary tree and the patient may have jaundice so next important clinical feature is jaundice now there is an important sign which is termed as camelot sign so have a look what is camelot sign Now following intrabiliary rupture of the cyst what happens sometimes air may enter into the cyst and which can cause what it can cause collapse of the wall of the cyst this is termed as camelot sign so this camelot sign is due to intrabiliary rupture what happens gas enters into cyst And this may cause partial collapse of the cyst wall. Partial collapse of the cyst wall. So it is termed as Camelot sign. Now after that, other clinical features which patient may present with, these are weight loss and fatigue. And the weight loss in children due to hydrated disease, it is termed as hydrated cachexia in children. So there is hydrated 
Kekexia in children. Sometimes a patient may present with vomiting. Clear? Okay. Next, let us discuss the various classification systems which are used in hydrated disease. So, next we will discuss about the classification. Now, first type of classification we have Hassan Garbi's ultrasound based classification. So, first we will discuss about Hassan Garbi's ultrasound based classification. Now, in this we have type 1, which is a pure fluid collection. Type 1 is pure fluid collection. After that, we have type 2. It is fluid collection with split wall. So, it is type 2 is fluid collection fluid collection with split wall after that we have type 3 which is fluid collection with septa so type 3 is type 3 is fluid collection with septa now then we have type 4 if there is heterogeneous appearance of the cyst it is type 4 so type 4 is heterogeneous appearance heterogeneous appearance and if on ultrasound there are thick walls surrounding the cyst it is type 5 cyst so what is type 5 Type 5 is a thick walled cyst. A thick walled cyst. Now, another classification system which is used, we have WHO classification. So, let us discuss WHO classification system. So, we have WHO classification. In WHO classification, we have type CL and it includes active unilocular containing no cyst wall and it is a early stage cyst and please remember it is not fertile. Then after that we have CE1 and CE1 is active. In this, the cyst wall is present and hydrated sand is present. It contains hydrated sand and it is fertile. Now, after that, we have CE2. CE2. CE2 is active. It is multivesicular. Multivesicular. Rosette like. Rosette like cyst wall. And it is also fertile. After that, we have CE3. Now, CE3 is. It is a transitional, transitional detaching laminated membrane and in this we have water lily sign, water lily sign and this is important, water lily sign and what happens there is beginning of degeneration beginning of degeneration so sometimes question is asked water lily sign is seen in which type of who classification it is ce3 it is seen in ce3 
After that, we have CE4 and CE4 includes an inactive with degenerative contents. There are no daughter cysts and it is not fertile. Clear? After that, we have CE5 and CE5 it includes an inactive thick calcified thick calcified wall and all again it is not fertile 